Welcome back to My Hot Kitchen. I'm Wendy, and I'd like to welcome you to our new hot kitchen. Tonight, as every night, we'll be teaching you a delicious romantic feast for you to share with your sweetie on your next romantic date night at home. Tonight's feast will include a stuffed portobello mushroom to serve as the appetizer, and for the entree, a blushing steak with crab, some veggies, and something I like to call potato pillows. So let's get started on the mushroom first. The very first thing that you're gonna to need to do is fry a couple pieces of bacon. So two nice strips of yummy, smoky, salty bacon. This is gonna add a delicious layer of flavor to the portobello mushroom. While that gets going, we're gonna marinate the mushroom. So you're gonna take a delicious portobello mushroom and douse it with olive oil and red wine vinegar. Nice little dousing on there. I'm also gonna pull the stem off because that is just gonna interfere with the stuffing. I'm also gonna hit it with some red wine vinegar. Kind of think of this as your salad dressing. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Use your fingers, sort of rub it in. You can leave the gills in like I'm doing or if you don't like the texture, feel free to scoop them out. And do the same thing on the other side. Nice amount of olive oil, red vinegar to bring it out of its shell, and of course salt and pepper, your classic foundations of flavor. A big portobello mushroom like this, you're only going to need to make one. Now if all you can find are little portobello mushrooms, go ahead and make one for each of you. Alright, and with that part done, let's go back over here and flip the bacon. You can cook it somewhere between crispy and tender. The whole idea is just to infuse the dish with that yummy bacony flavor. Now I'm gonna give my hands a quick little wash. All right, now I'm just gonna give myself a little space because I don't need that thing just yet. But what I do need is to get this yummy bacon out of the pan. I lay it on a paper towel, let it drain off. It's not burnt, it's not soft, it's just perfect. Set that over there by its little mushroom friend. Now with all this yummy rendered fat in here, I'm gonna start working on the stuffing for the portobello mushroom. I have a couple cloves of chopped up garlic, a couple tablespoons of minced shallot, a little bit of pepper, about a tablespoon's worth of chopped pepper, an aroma tomato that I've pulped and diced, and a half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of celery salt. There's all a little love here in the heat. Mm-hmm, wow, that smells good. Let them cook together for a moment. Let them know each other. That is gonna be divine. Basically, we're making a salad and we're putting it on top of a portobello mushroom and baking it off. It's gonna be awesome. There we go, that looks really yummy right there. Now you're gonna need a little food glue to hold this all together. And there's basically two options when it comes to needing food glue. There's eggs and there's cheese. Now since the sauce for the steak calls for an egg yolk, you can use the egg white in this dish. It's gonna hold everything together beautifully. I'm just gonna crack open my egg here and let the white drain off. There we go. Save the yolk. Get rid of that shell and just quickly mix it all together. You want to let that egg yolk coat all of the components that are stuffing the portobello mushroom. All right, now that egg white is all cooked in there and holding the goodies together. You can take the pan off the heat and bring it over here. It's time to build the mushroom. I want to start by taking this bacon and laying it down inside the portobello mushroom. Add a nice little crunch and that yummy saltiness. Yum. Take your filling and pour it over the top. Yummy. All those yummy ingredients will be working together to make this awesome. Stretch it out. That is hot. I'm gonna need my spatula to do that. There we go. And then take about a quarter cup of seasoned breadcrumbs. Sprinkle it over the top. If you don't have any seasoned breadcrumbs, just take some plain breadcrumbs and add seasoning salt to taste. There we go. 
And then this whole thing goes into the oven. I have the oven preset to 350 degrees, and I'm going to be placing this in the top third of the oven. And a portobello mushroom like that is going to take, I don't know, anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes to roast. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get the steak marinating. And I need to clear myself off a little space here, away from the vegetables. There we go. I'm going to start by dousing it with some balsamic vinegar. And the next step is to prepare the spices. I have a blend of pepper and coriander in here. I'm just going to give it a quick little crush. This is my little man, uh, manual mortar and pestle here. I find that the back of a spoon and a bowl work very well for this sort of purpose. just want to break it up a little bit. Yeah, some things are going to launch. That's half the fun. Once you get the coriander and the pepper all broken down, then you can start by sprinkling a little bit on each side of the steak. Also a bit of tarragon. About a half teaspoon's worth altogether. Give the steak some loving little stabs so that those flavors go deep inside it. You can use any sort of lean cut of steak that you like. I recommend a New York steak or a filet mignon or a top sirloin. Flip it over and give the other side the same delicious treatment. Yummy cracked coriander and pepper. Another pinch of that delicious tarragon. And more stabbing. The vinegar is going to work on the meat and help to tenderize it. And in addition, going to add a nice little layer of flavor that your sweetie is going to find enticing. Put a cover back on it and stick it back in the fridge. Let it just relax in here and marinate and soak up those flavors until we're ready to grill it off. So with the mushroom roasting and the steak marinating, you can now think about the aioli, which is going to be the delicious topping to the mushroom. I'm going to start by taking a clove of garlic and working it into a bit of a mash here. I've already got it minced up and I'm going to add a little salt to it and just work it with the back of the spoon until it becomes more like a paste. And that way the garlic blends more smoothly into the mayonnaise and makes a delicious aioli to top it. I'm going to work on those big chunks there. And that's good enough for me right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I do still like some chunkiness to the fact of the aioli. And I'm going to scoop it into my tablespoon of mayonnaise. Add a squeeze of lemon or so. And just blend that all together. And this is how you transform your ordinary household mayonnaise into something incredible. A little loving stirring here. Start until all those lumps disappear. That means the flavors have blended completely together. Let's give it a little taste and see if all those flavors are in balance. It's really good, but I can still kind of taste it being a little bit mayonnaise-y, so I'm going to work a little more lemon into it, both to balance out the flavors and to thin it out just a little bit more. You work as much lemon into it as you like. You almost want it to have a flowy drop off the end of the spoon. One more little taste. Mm, perfect. I'm just going to hold that in the fridge until the mushroom is ready to go. Well, the mushroom has had about 25 minutes now to roast and become the amazing creation that it is. So I'm going to take it out of the oven. And the way that I know that the portobello has roasted enough is that it's released a lot of liquid. And that it's sort of wilted down on the sides. So it's going to need a few minutes to cool. You do want to serve it warm atop a bed of nice thinly chopped romaine lettuce. But you want to let it cool down before you go ahead and do that. Mm. 
Let's see how we're doing temperature wise. Still warm, not scalding hot anymore. Perfect. Tip it to the side. Let some of those juices drain off. They're gonna be delicious on the salad too. Just plant it right atop mountain of greens. And then you're gonna need your aioli. Bring in a little bit of that. I kind of like just to put it on the top and let it flow down the side and let it do its thing like that. And for a little fun and color, nice little spiral of chili sauce. Yum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have a big gigantic one, so it's, we're just gonna split it. It's ginormous. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> Definitely a fork and knife endeavor here. <laughs> Ooh, this looks yummy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a salad, you know? Holy cow, that's so good. Yay. Mmm. Mmm, mm -hmm. that's <laughs> yummy. Mmm. Let's still eat this over there. Okay. Now that stuffed portobello mushroom was awesome. I can't wait for you to try it with your sweetie. That was so good. I want another one. But I'm going to move on to making the rest of the meal. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my three small potatoes. I chose to use Yukon Gold potatoes and douse them in boiling water. To that I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt because the one true opportunity that you have to properly season a potato made in this fashion is when it's boiling. A quick little stir here just to make sure that salt's dissolved and then boil these until they break apart easily. I'm gonna take a look now and see how these potatoes are doing. I want to make them pretty much just pulverize under the pressure of a spoon and they are there so now I'm gonna drain them out. I have a colander here in my sink. Shake off that water. I'm gonna bring it back over here. And then the next step for the potato pillows is to extrude them. You can use a variety of tools for this. You can use a ricer, you can use a food mill, or you can simply push them through the holes of a wide colander. So I'm using the back of this spoon here. I'm just pushing it through the holes purpose of this is to make the potatoes a very fine, smooth, sumptuous texture. The only way to do that is to extrude them. Mashing them only takes it so far. So I'm just going to work it back and forth here. Scrape off the outside, as you can see all that potato on there. I want that all in my little pot here. And it's very helpful to do this while the potatoes are still nice and hot. Next add two tablespoons of butter and about a quarter cup of sour cream. I'm going to bury the butter in the hot potatoes and let it get melting. I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of paprika for color and flavor and a nice little dusting of freshly grated nutmeg. And then we're gonna whip it together with a pair of beaters. Whip it together until all the butter, the paprika, and sour cream, the potatoes are one. And of course you're gonna to wanna to give a little taste just to make sure those seasonings are right. Mmm. That is the smoothest, richest texture ever. That is so good. So here's a fun way to shape these up. Grab a nice little scoop on your spoon and use two spoons, sort of form it into a little wedge shape like that. 
and put it out on a baking pan that's been lined. You can use parchment or a silicone mat, whatever you have on hand. See, it's just kind of a shifting motion between the two different spoons. And it forms these pretty little shapes. If you've never done it before, just give yourself a few minutes to practice it and get a feel for how it works. And when you're all done, you can stick your beautiful potato pillows in the oven. I have mine preheated to 400 degrees and cook them until they start to brown up a bit. And now it's time to start making the Bernays sauce. It's a bit of an involved process. This is what we call the blushing sauce. So I have a quarter cup here of sparkling blush wine. You can use sparkling or still. They both get the job done just great. To that I'm going to add about a half teaspoon or so of dried tarragon and a little pinch of chopped scallop. I went ahead and stole that off the mushroom when I was prepping that. And to that, about a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. Also helps to enhance that pretty red color that we're going to enjoy. So just put this over the pot of boiling water and allow it to evaporate out about half of its liquids. While that goes on, you can start working on the onion rings that are going to go atop the steak. So I'm going to start by adding a nice generous amount of olive oil to my pan here. You can use whatever sort of frying oil you like, even butter. Give it a moment here to get warmed up. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and dredge these onions. So I have this nice slice of onion. You can see it's about a quarter to a half inch thick. And I'm going to pop out the inner sections because those are just too small to even mess with. And I'm going to take the outer rings and dredge them in this flour, like I said. The moisture from the onions should be sufficient to coat the ring in the flour. Just a nice light little dusting. And then drop them in the oil. You dredge them so that they have a little bit of crispy crust on them. And it helps to enhance the texture of the entire dish. Make sure that olive oil gets up and around each of those onion rings and just let them brown. Go ahead and get these onion rings out of the oil. I'm going to scoop them out over here onto a paper towel so they can drain off. There we go. And I'm going to be reusing this pan, so I'm just going to empty out the oil into a heat proof container. Give it a nice little scrape. There we go. And before the onion rings cool down too much, I want to hit them with a little salt. And now it's time to start cooking off the steaks. So you want to make sure your grill's nice and hot. And then take these lovely steaks that have been sitting happily in their marinade for a while now and place them on the grill. There we go. Oh yeah, that's good stuff right there. And cook them to your liking. While they cook, you can come over here and start finishing the Bernays sauce. So you can see that about half of the wine is cooked off. That's perfect. The flavors have concentrated. Those shallots have been slightly pickled. We're ready to proceed to the next step. So add that egg yolk that you saved in earlier. Whisk. Hey, get in there. Come on now. <laughs> whisk it, whisk it. And while you're whisking it, drizzle in those two tablespoons of melted butter. Just a little bit at a time. I'm going to emulsify these ingredients together, very similar to how you would make a hollandaise. You want the gentle heat from the bottom, gently cooking the egg. While it cooks, it builds up the structure, blends with the butter, and the end result is truly one of the finest sauces you'll ever have. And 
Whisk it until the consistency comes around. The longer the eggs cook, the thicker the sauce gets. What you don't want to do is overcook it because you'll end up with scrambled eggs. So the sauce is thickening up absolutely beautifully right now. And to further enhance its color, I'm going to add just a couple little sprinkles of paprika in there. Whisk that in. There we go. That is beautiful. Taste it. Just a little tiny bit. Mmm. Bernays sauce has to be truly one of my favorite sauces. I just adore it. So I'm going to take it off the heat here. I'm going to hold it. I may want to thin it down a little bit later, but right before service with a little bit of that water. So I'm going to keep that water nice and warm too. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the steaks. Me and my sweetie like them to be turned right as the juices show up because that helps to create a medium rare cooking. <laughs> and that is just how we like them done. There we go. A few more minutes on that side. Plus, hopefully you save the marinade because you can really enhance the flavor by pouring the rest of it over the top of the steak at this point. Now, let's get started on the vegetables. So I'm going to start with the pan being just like it is because I scraped it out. There's still a little bit of flavor and a little bit of oil in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these going. Give them a little love with some salt and pepper. Let's have a nice mix here of yellow squash and zucchini. One thing about holding the sauce is you want to do your best to maintain the kind of lukewarm temperature. So you may want to take it off and on the heat a few times. Whisk it every time. Keep it a happy little sauce. The lows are getting closer. And these are almost there too. I'm going to give them a little brush, share the marinade between the two steaks, and I can see that one is cooking faster than the other, so I'm going to quickly change that course here, move them around on my grill. Now, let's start working on the plating, because these potatoes are ready to go too. Potato pillows. This time around, I went ahead and made them with Yukon Gold potatoes. So when I tested them, I was using russet potatoes, and it was very good but I thought that the Yukon Golds would have an even better effect. There we go. Put those off to one side on the plate. All pretty and yummy like that. Done with that. Now let's take a look at these vegetables here. These are good and ready. I'm gonna go ahead and add these to the party over here on the plates. Mm, yum! Now it's all about this magnificent piece of meat. Yeah, it looks great right now. Wait until you see how it's finished off. Let's go ahead and turn off the fan here. I want to start with some nice crab meat. This is a snow crab cluster. One cluster's worth of meat here that I picked out. Put it gently on top of the steak. Doesn't that look delicious? But we're not gonna stop there. Oh no. Come on, crab, stay on there. Next, bring on the onion rings. Add a nice little texture and yumness to the steak as well. And then the Bernays sauce. Put that over here. Let's check the consistency on that. I'm going to want to thin that down a little bit. Use a bit of the water, maybe two spoonfuls. Whisk that in. Mm -hmm. There we go. We have a nice pourable consistency now. And douse the top of the steak, the onion rings and the crab, and the sauce. 
make sure you scrape every little bit out of the bowl. You're gonna want all of it, because it's awesome. Go. Go over here and get this other one too. Mm-hmm. Your sweetie is gonna be flipping cartwheels in your kitchen because this is so delicious. And there you go. Blushing steak with crab, a fun new take on surf and turf, an old romantic favorite. Now this is a lot of complexity in this dish. You've got your red meat, your crab, your crispy fried onions. So make it easy on yourself. Serve it up with a blush champagne and call in your sweetie. Bring on the evening attack. Hi, honey. Hi. Mmm, check this out. Mmm, mm. check you out. Oh, thanks. Mmm, <laughs> kitchen. Mmm. Look, too. This looks delicious. Mmm. All of your favorites on mm -hmm. one dish. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Such a hot kitchen! <laughs> so thanks for joining me in my hot kitchen tonight. Have fun turning up the heat in your kitchen, and I'll see you next week. Night night!